Hello, my friends. This is Sobe Carrie, Lady of Q. And today I have prepared for you a goat birria. And one of the things I want you to keep in mind as we go through this video, at the end, I'm going to reveal to you what the final product's about and the hoops we had to jump through to get it there. These are some of the frozen meats that my daughter brought with her for us when she came home for the Christmas holidays. And I'm looking at this Billy, and I guess this is, his, I'm a guess that this is goat. Uh, she said there was goat, caribou, and moose, and this is the only thing that's labeled as such. So I'm going to be cooking this baby up. Maybe I'll make a birria. <laughs> that's on my agenda today. Today I am going to attempt to make a birria or a variation of birria which is a stew in a chili sauce. It's a Hispanic dish for cold afternoons, evening meal, comfort food. And this is only like about 14 ounces, so a little bit less than a pound of what is labeled Billy HQ Rose, or better known as goat. Now she says that the person who gave it to her said it was very, very tough. So I'm going to have to first process it in the pressure cooker and then go on to the other components of the, the meal. Here are some of the ingredients that I'm going to be using. I have a cinnamon stick with four cloves, allspice, I have five allspice, a half a teaspoon of pepper, a teaspoon and a half of salt. This is dried thyme and it's approximately a teaspoon. Dried oregano and that's going to make approximately a teaspoon, two teaspoons. Cumin, one teaspoon. Bay leaves, half of an onion and I have six cloves of garlic and four guajillo chilies. It also called for ancho chilies, but didn't have any. And I'm not gonna be able to go to the grocery store and get any, so I'm gonna to have to make do with that and a substitute for ancho. I also have some tomatoes. These were frozen back in June, and I stewed them. So I'm gonna use those. That's the ingredient list, except for the wet ingredients, which is gonna include some chicken broth. I have the guajillo chilies in a cast iron skillet and I'm going to be toasting them over a high heat. This is a very quick process. I don't want to burn them. I just want to get them toasty. Toasting them develops the flavor. If you burn them, they'll become bitter and that'll just ruin my broth, my sauce, my soup. Once I toast them, I am then going to put them in some hot water so that they could soak up that water and get soft again. The next step from that is to put them in a blender with some of the other seasonings and spices to make my seasoning chili sauce for my goat. You can tell when they get a little toasty because some of the oils start to coming out. In addition, you can smell it. You can smell the aroma that comes from toasting these chilies. I think we're there. It doesn't take very much. The chilies will soak in hot water for about 20-25 minutes until they are soft. The recipe called for roasted tomatoes. I'm using some tomatoes that I had in the freezer and I'm not going to roast them, but I'm going to cook off a lot of this liquid here, and I'll call that my pseudo-roasting. I used the same skillet that I toasted the chili peppers in, so a little bit of the aroma of those chili peppers may get infused with these tomatoes. This is my hind quarter from Billy Goat. It's about 13 ounces. I removed quite a bit of the silver skin. Can't be biting through that and chawing through it, so it had to go. I'm gonna cut it into a few little cubes 
And then I'm going to put that into the pressure cooker with some of the seasonings and spices. I cut the goat into one inch, one and a half inch ish cubes. And I'm going to initially cook it on the pressure cooker for 30 minutes. I'm not sure how far it's going to get in that time, but I can always start it over again. To my pressure cooker, I'm going to add, this is chicken broth, approximately two cups of chicken broth. When going into pressure cooker, it doesn't take much liquid. The reason for that being that it doesn't evaporate. All the juices and all that stay within the pot. To that, I'm going to add my billy goat. I'm not going to profess that this is any authentic anything. It's just my rendition of doing a birria. And I'm incorporating a number of different recipes, not one recipe, not two. There's about three or four different ones out there. I'm taking bits of this recipe to make what I think may be a good recipe. This is about a half of an onion cut up. I've got bay leaves. I have four. I'm only going to use two of them, two of the larger ones. I've got a cinnamon stick. I've got cloves. Many of the recipes suggest that you take all these aromatics and put them in the sauce mixture and then blend them later on. I want that flavor in the meat, so I'm going to put it here in the pressure cooker. I had six cloves of garlic. I'm going to take approximately, I'll say four of those, and I'm going to save the rest to put in the sauce blend. I'm going to add to this my pepper and a little bit of the salt. Once I do the sauce blend, it's going to be added to this mixture so all those seasonings and spices will come together in the end. I'm going to close up the pressure cooker. Make sure I have it set to non-vent. I'm going to push the button for chicken meat and I'm going to set it for actually for 40 minutes. And then I'm going to come back and check that after it's cooked for a while and we'll be on with making this birria. B-I-R-R-I-A. And that is a, you can call it a stewed goat in a chili sauce. You could call it a goat in a chili sauce. Any of those different names. It's all the same thing and it's all going to be just delish. Now I'm going to move on to making the chili sauce. We'll start with our guajillo chilies that were soaking in water. They're de-seeded. I'll add that. Next I'm going to add the remainder of my garlic. Cumin. Salt, dried oregano, thyme, and I have my tomatoes that I cooked in the cast iron skillet. I actually added a little bit of olive oil to this also. Thought about that after noting that that goat is actually very, very lean hardly any fat in it. So a little bit of fat might be a good addition to this mixture. And you're going to put a little bit of the soaking water in here. Not much. And we'll start with blending. pretty good. We're also going to strain this. I'll show you what the consistency is so far. I think I'm going to add a little bit more of the chili water. Not a lot, just a little bit. 
Eat a bit. That will make it easier to strain. There's still some residual seeds that are in there and also the skin off of the chilies that also not all of it grinds up very well. And I think that'll do it. That is our chili sauce. I'm gonna taste a little bit of that. Ah, oh, that's quite yummy. It's got a little bit of heat, a little bit of kick to it. But we're good to go. My chili sauce is going to be added to the broth that's in the pressure cooker with the billy goat. And that's going to make a fine little soupy mixture. I finished draining the chili sauce. And this is the glob of stuff that would not go through the strainer. This includes things such as the skins from the tomato and the skins from the chili. The strained sauce looks pretty good. It's got a little heat to it though, so I'm going to be careful in how I add it to my billy goat. Pressure cooker timer is off, and I'm just waiting for it to finish venting down so that I can open it. I did wind up doing an additional 40 minutes. The goat was actually very, very tough at the end of the first 40 minutes. We'll see what we get now. This is the goat mixture. And though it isn't completely cooked yet, it's still, I would say, a, a bit tough. And I'm going to let it go again. I'm going to add some of the chili sauce mixture to it so that can infuse with the meat during this next session. Actually, I've got about three hours before dinner. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go on and add the chili mixture, and I'm going to put it on slow cooker and let it go from there for that three hours. And hopefully within that time period, it will get much more tender. I transferred the billy goat and the broth to a Dutch oven. I'm going to add some of the sauce to it and I'm going to simmer this for the next couple of hours until I can get this billy goat tender. I added about one cup of the chili sauce mixture. In addition, I removed the onions that were in the pressure cooker broth. They had almost become just nothing so I figured that it looked better if I just take them out. So now I have my billy goat chili sauce. I left the allspice and the garlic in and we'll simmer this on low for another couple hours in hopes of getting this billy goat tender. We're almost at the end of this cook and oh lordy 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 you guys are not going to believe this. I put this stew through the pressure cooker for 80 minutes and the billy goat still wasn't tender. I then moved it here to the cooktop to simmer and slow cook and it's been on since oh, let's just say it's 7 o'clock p.m. and I put it on about 4, 5, 6, 7, so that's 3 hours in. Uh, hour ago I did taste it and it was still quite chewy. So I'm going to let it go again because now it's beginning to break down and I think I will get there. There's not much billy goat. It looks good. It tastes good. But Lord have mercy. We're talking about 80 minutes pressure, 3 hours so far, slow cook. I'm going to give it one more hour. We've got our billy goat that has been simmering for the past four hours in a chili sauce. Prior to that, we cooked it in a pressure cooker for a total of 80 minutes, 40 minutes, then again for another 40 minutes. 
with a lot of spices and herbs and things to make this yummy. And the spices and the herbs actually pulled off a flavor and a smell that was just totally yummy. This billy goat was very tough and I was warned that it was a very tough piece of meat. Very lean. No fat at all. We did trim off a lot of the silver skin and no fat. Hind quarter of the billy goat. It tastes very good. It's going to go very well with some condiments on some tortillas. I'm not going to be able to taste it tonight for you. Uh, a little late. A little late. It's We've already had dinner, but I just want to show you the finished product. I've got here some lemons or cilantro, but I do have some parsley. And I have some pasilla leaves. And I have the stewed preparation. And that's actually really, really good. And I wish I had an appetite for it tonight, but I don't. This is Sylvie Carey, Lady of Q. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen. I want you to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Come back and tell a friend.